Guys, welcome back to Rodder's Garage. All right, so this has been another one of those summers where time just escaped me. I can't believe that uh, we sandblasted this thing 80 days ago. That's how long it's been since the last video. I haven't even made one since then. It's been a really busy summer. Got a lot of projects done here in the shop. Plus, we kind of do our little metal art business on the side. Bought a building next door. We got a box truck, and we go to swap meets, and we have this little setup. And we pedal some metal art for a little bit of extra cash. So we spent a lot of time doing that. Going to a lot of other shows and basically the Model A sat here the entire time since we got it back here from the sandblasting. I did a couple of small things, one of which is the gas tank. Let's take a look at that real quick. Yeah, so if you guys recall back when I sandblasted the body, I said I was going to hold off on the fuel tank because I was thinking about cutting the bottoms of the tank out so I can sandblast the inside. Well. Instead of doing that, I decided I was going to use some acid and acid uh, the inside of the tank basically to clean it out. So I figured I'd go ahead and just sandblast it right away. And when I sandblasted it, this is what I found out. And I should have known that. I should have expected that completely because there was no gas cap on it. If there would have been a cap on it, I can bet you that it probably wouldn't have rotted out like that. But there was a ton of junk in there. It rained in there for how many years? So this one is pretty much cashed. But I did find one at Simcoe this year. Uh, that car show we go to every year. I actually made a video on the Simcoe Weekender last year. I found one in the swap meet there. It looks to be in really good condition. Same exact tank. So we're going to go ahead and get that one sandblasted at some point. And hopefully that one holds fuel so we can just swap out this one for that one. This would still be a good tank in the future if I was going to do a V8 hot rod or something where the gas tank isn't up there. If we put a small block in one, we'd more than likely put the fuel tank at the back, like a 32 style fuel tank. That would stick out behind the tail pan with the frame extensions and all that good stuff. But for what we're doing with the banger motor in this one, we definitely need a good fuel tank to be up here. So. Basically, we got that one. We'll do that in an upcoming video. I even got pinholes out here on the side, as you can see, that were bleeding rust out. This thing is very rotten, so we'll save that one for a different project. Anyway, today today's all about the front horns. I want to get this done. This thing's been sitting here staring at me all summer. I haven't touched it, and this drives me nuts. I want to finish this frame off in the front here, get this cross member replaced, and get the horns put back on the thing so it looks a little bit better. All this weld that they had piled on over the years to hold things together, it'd be nice to clean all that up and make it look right. Probably going to go ahead and just put a tube on the front of these rails when we're all done put a tube across there because probably not going to run fenders we might mess with them in the future but we're probably just going to leave it open and i like the look of the tube going across the front in front of the grill shell so that's pretty much the game plan today we'll spend a couple hours on it and basically that's where we're going to end this video we'll just take care of this and we'll start on something else after that probably body patching so first order of business before I start haphazardly cutting all this stuff out of the front here without thinking about it, I'm going to go ahead and bolt the body down. By bolting the body down, I'm going to get the body framing structure bolted to the chassis. That's just going to hold everything a little bit better. Once I do that, I can go ahead and come up here and I probably will just tack two pieces of steel, I don't know, angle iron pipe tube, doesn't matter, tack two pieces on bottom and top of the frame right behind the cross member and then I can go ahead and cut this one right out. I think I said in the sandblasting video I might save this, I'm not going to. I'm just going to go ahead and cut the thing with the plasma twice, knock the rivets out, and we can install the new one right away after that. Once that's installed into place, and we can go ahead and put the horns on the front. So basically by bolting the body down, we're going to make sure everything stays square in the back. And then before we actually fully weld the new cross member in, I'm not going to be riveting it. I'm just going to basically weld it all the way around. Before we do that, we will verify squareness from basically the front of the floor framing to the front corners of the frame. If you recall, back when we framed the floors, I made sure that the frame was true all the way up to the firewall. Now we have to make sure from the firewall forward that it's 100% square before we totally lock it in with the new cross member. So I'll get the plasma over here. Let's get going on this and see if we can finish off the front of this chassis tonight.
percent spot on square. I can burn it in. Sweet. turned out pretty good. I like the way that looks in there. Got it fitting nice and tight up to the front of the rails. Got my nuts captured on the inside of those plates for in the tube as you saw earlier. Got the bolts put in. I did have to file the holes a little bit and kind of cheat them over and, and fill a little bit, but it looks good now. Not sure if I really like these bolt heads sticking out, but they should be all right. I maybe can get something a little bit thinner or just grind the heads down so they're only half thickness here on the height. That would look a little bit better too. Then again, once it's all in paint, they really won't stand out as much either. So I like that and I like the fact that it's removable because if I do want to go back to putting fenders and everything on here at some point, this will probably have to go and then we'll have to drill the one, oh no, we kept that hole. We'll be able to put the bumpers back on here or the bumper brackets and for that we'll have to remove this like I said. So I like the fact that it's removable and that pretty much wraps up the front end here except for one thing that's bothering me, I think we're going to finish it right away, is up here where I welded the cradle or the cross member to the frame rail 
Um, it actually kind of curves up right about a quarter inch inside the rail. So when I filled that with weld, I kind of got a little bit of, I don't know, undercut here on the bottom or whatever. I don't like the way that looks. So I'm going to go ahead and put one more pass down here from the cradle to probably center line of this weld on both sides. And then I'm going to sacrifice a brand new flap disc, take a nice sharp new edge, and just buff this out front to back so it's a nice smooth transition from the rail into the cradle. After that, I'd say we're pretty much done with the front end of the frame anyway. Well, that was definitely the ticket down here for this weld. Got it all buffed off and ground. It looks nice. It flows into the rail like that. Got both sides done. And that pretty much completes the repair on the front of the frame. We're looking pretty good now. Everything looks straight. Like I said, I measured it before. I measured it on camera and I actually measured again for squareness. We are spot on and we don't have any twists or anything weird going on. We should be 100% good to go on this thing. So. That's pretty much going to wrap up today's video when we come back, which will be a lot sooner than the 80 days I just took off since the sandblasting. Um, I think I'm going to split this up into sections. We're going to do firewall repair and cowl patches, and then we're going to move on and probably do doors in one video, and then we'll move on to the back of the car, probably the quarters, making a tail pan, making a deck lid for it, Then we'll probably have another one for making the roof, and obviously probably one more for doing the floor pans as well. And then we do have to address this fuel tank thing. I'll have to blast that other one that I picked up and see if we can replace this with it but we'll be moving along now hopefully so thanks for watching guys appreciate it till next time